got we got a caller up this is uh michael ray what's going on what's going on man you all right i'm doing all right man how you doing i'm blessed and thankful man uh praise to the most high god and his son jesus christ um i wanted to hop on real quick i seen the video and uh i mean i had actually reached out to cap uh cap what how you say it Cesar or something like that Cesar, yeah captain yeah Zarya. yeah yeah because i seen one of his videos with uh him and Hassad, I guess they were talking about being in a new covenant. Now I mm -hmm. agree that we are in a new covenant. Okay. Um, but uh some of the things that I seen in the video with Tommy, I was like, man, uh I just can't rock with that, bro. Like like what? Uh, you know, uh y'all you know believe that uh white people are the Edomites. Um mm -hmm. there's no there's no concrete evidence. Um and when I you know do some research and, and see that the Edomites are already destroyed some people say that no it isn't um but i don't see slavery happening in the kingdom of heaven on a new earth in a new jerusalem in revelation 21 or 22. i i just can't see that um it, it doesn't say it anywhere so you know that right there also y'all believe in vengeance um the bible says vengeance belongs to the lord romans 12. you know jesus says to love your enemies bless them do good to them and pray for them um, and so I believe in keeping the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, Jesus, um, you know, he said that was it that the, the Gentiles, they lend to sinners. Right. But he said, uh, be more than that. Be perfect as your father is perfect. Right. So that's so that's loving your enemies and blessing them and doing good to them. Um, and so I ask people if, if they follow Jesus, are y'all loving your enemies? Are y'all blessing them? Are you praying for them? Are you doing good to them? You know, um, that's in Matthew 5 and even Luke 6. We could bring the scriptures up if you want, brother. But yeah, let's go to the text. Yeah, we could for sure go to the text. Now, Now the thing is, um, and like what most Christians do is, you know, they just start preaching. And um, you jumped all over to a bunch of different topics. But there's a couple of things that I want to highlight, right? Okay. Um, first thing is, I always find it, I don't know if, if, I, if it's the irony of it, but by you turning around and saying love your enemy right mm -hmm. and, and you're putting that in context to white people correct i'm putting it to anybody who's my enemy anybody who's coming but, up against but, me right but, but, but what i'm saying is you're utilizing that because we say the white man is our enemy and you pulled that scripture to identify that as white people did you not for y'all yeah because i guess you say that the, the white man is your enemy and but jesus commanded you to love them and to bless them and to so pray what, for them what i'm saying is by you even doing that you're acknowledging that white people are, are are by proxy the enemy no i'm saying that's how you view it so i'm answering well that's how that's how you would view it if you would use that scripture no i don't i don't see white people as as my enemy brother <laughs> no, you, <laughs> you know why you know why you can't see it because <laughs> Christianity, right, turns around and loving white people and serving white people is coming out your pores because of Christianity, because it's coming out the walls. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And unfortunately, like we suffer from Stockholm syndrome. Unfortunately, you understand, we turn around and, and, and we suffer from 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 just being home born slaves inside of this place that we don't have enough spine to come up against massa. But let me explain why you don't understand the context of that scripture. So you went a couple of different places. We could discuss the identity of the Edomites, right? But now let me show you the, 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 the foes, the enemies that you're supposed to love. First of all, this is Matthews 10 and 34. Christ said out his own mouth, think not that I've come to send peace on earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword. The, the effeminate version of Christ that's in the Christian church, they don't never read this scripture. Now, this is, this is Matthews 10 and 35, the immediate verse after where it says, for I am come to set a man at variance. Do you know what the word variance means? Mm -hmm. Separate or You're against. Against, mm -hmm. against, do you understand? Mm -hmm. Against his father and the daughter against her mother. Mm -hmm. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's foes. We agree that foes and enemies are, are, are synonymous with one another. Mm -hmm. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. The, those enemies that you're talking about, right, that we're supposed to love is our people. 
those enemies that you're talking about that we're supposed to love are our people, our family members, our loved ones who don't want to serve Christ, who won't wake up to the truth and now hate us for the truth. It's not talking about another nation. When another nation comes up against Israel, let me ask you something, right? When Goliath, a Philistine who was not an Israelite, came up against David, what, what, what was the end of that story? He cut his head off. Oh, but I thought they were enemies and you're supposed to love your enemy. So you believe in, in the new covenant, right? I believe in the old covenant, the new covenant, the whole Bible, start to finish. So, so Jeremiah 31, uh, the father said that he was going to make a covenant uh, not according to, right? So not according to means different, right? So mm -hmm. if it's different, then we see some changes. For the priesthood being changed, there's also being a change also of the law, Hebrews 7 verse 12. So we see some changes that Christ also brought as well. Um, so for example, like in Matthew chapter 6, uh, we can't find this in the Torah anywhere. He says, lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth, right? But store up treasures in heaven. You won't find that anywhere. That's a commandment. So, for example, when Jesus is giving commandments in Matthew 5 all the way to Matthew 7, he's establishing the new covenant commands, which is the law of Christ. Because you see, he says in Matthew 5, 19, whosoever shall break one of the least of these commandments. And these, by grammar, is letting us know something that he's about to present. And then he says, you have heard that it had been said by them of old time. But I say unto you. So when the son of God, who is divine, right, he, he says, but I say unto you, he's giving a commandment. Just like he says, do not store up treasures on earth. If I say to my son, son, do not jump on the couch. That's a commandment. So you won't find anywhere in the Torah, do not store up treasures here on earth, but lay up treasures in heaven. That's a commandment, brother. <laughs> so, yeah. so, there's, so, so, there's, so there's, there's a change. We saying love your enemies. Yeah, right? he's like, mm -hmm. go okay, ahead. no, 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 go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Be well, because first off, we see in Psalms, I think it's the Psalms 139, uh, where David says he has a perfect hatred for his enemy, yeah, right. So Jesus is saying, You have heard to hate or to love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy, but I say unto you, love your enemy and bless them and do good to them. So we clearly see the context here because we can see in Psalms 139. Uh, where David is saying he has a perfect hatred of his enemy. And he's not talking about people of his own household, correct? Uh, correct, but it also says that these are the Lord's enemies. So if the Lord has enemies, who are we supposed to be loyal to? Should we not love what the Lord loves and hate what he hates? Amen. So we hate the sin Perfectly. that these people commit. But let me take it, hold on, before ahead, we get ahead, let me take it a step further, right? Because now let me read you something that's in the New Testament then. Go ahead concerning david so this is acts 13 and 22 and it says and when he had removed him he raised up unto them david to be their king to whom he also gave a testimony and said i have found david the son of jesse a man after mine own heart which shall fulfill my will of this man's seed hath god according to his promise raised unto israel a savior jesus now here's the thing we know that the scripture says that I, the Lord, change not. So if that's the case, was there a change in the priesthood? Sure. You understand? Because now uh, we're not only solidified with Le uh, uh, Levites. We're under the order of Melchizedek. You understand? Are we doing animal sacrifice right now? No, because none of that could compare to the blood of Christ. However, we still keep the laws. We still keep the commandments. Now, we read in the Old Testament, what you can find is that David is a man after the Lord's heart, own heart, a man who cut Goliath's head off with his own sword and said, I hate your enemies. You understand? Mm -hmm. And now we see in the New Testament that did not change. So I ask you, was David a man after the Lord's own heart? Yeah, brother. And the thing is, when the Lord says, I change not, understand his character doesn't change, but he can change how he deals with people. Correct. So correct. But if his okay, character, so, hey, hold on, if his character does not <laughs> change, does not the scriptures also say there's a time to love and a time to hate? So like I said, he can change how he's dealing with people. In Old I'm, Testament, I'm asking you yes said, or no. What, what was the question that, that it, the scripture it, says that there's a time? to say, is there a time to love and a time to hate? Ecclesiastes. Okay. Yeah. Then we so, can't love all the time. Uh, I read something different according to what Jesus says, brother. Um, 
Jesus. I, I know because you want to be a servant onto your slave master. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Let's, let's go to uh, Mark chapter uh, 9, verse 35 real quick. Let's go. Yeah, Mark 9, 35. You believe Jesus is Lord of your life? I mean, Christ is king. He has this one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Okay. All right. I believe he's Lord too. And so as you, it's as, as you should. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and read Mark one, uh, Mark 9, 35. You can read it. Okay. And he sat down and called the 12 and said to them, if anyone desires to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a, a, a little child and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said, whoever receives one of these little children in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18, unless you be converted and become like this little child here, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. You must become like a little child to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You must be forgiving. You must be loving. He says, if you don't forgive, neither will the father forgive you of your sins. This is clear as day. And so th these are salvation issues. Because in Matthew chapter 18, he talks about there was a king, right? And there was, he had somebody who owed him a debt and the person came to him, right? And pleaded, hey, please, you know, have mercy upon me. The king had mercy upon him. But then when he let and released and forgave that servant of all his debt, that same servant went out and found somebody who owed him, but he wasn't merciful to him. And he went and put that man in prison. And when the king found out about this in Matthew 18, right? He said, you should have shown compassion and mercy that I've shown to you. And Jesus says here in Matthew 18, let me, let's, let's go there real quick. Okay. Let's go there. I want you to see exactly what he says to the apostles, the ones that he called and chose, right? Himself. Uh, in verse 34, he says, and his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly father also would do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses so now once again like you're not helping your case right okay because our brothers is the seed of our people our neighbor is the seed of our people all these things that you're talking about is something that was given to israel for israel you can't bring that up anywhere now now, now let me ask you something is america babylon is America Babylon? I can't really say uh, with a with a short answer, so I'm not going to really answer but, that. But now there's a prophecy for Babylon to be okay. fulfilled. You understand? So what okay. then is going to, uh, excuse me, for, for the prophecy to be fulfilled is that Babylon's going to be destroyed, correct? So what, yeah, in, what in, then, in Revelation. So what then at the end, what nation is going to be destroyed for their sins, for their crimes? I don't know. You tell me. I, I'm asking you saying you don't know. You tell me what I'm, I'm saying. So just what? just just to be on the same page, you don't okay. know. You talking about Babylon to be destroyed, correct? I, I'm I'm asking you, right? So now, has the prophecy been fulfilled yet for Babylon to be destroyed? No, because we see it in Revelation. So yeah, no, it has. So, so we see it in Revelation. So that mm -hmm. means that it's coming, correct? Yes. So according to this, what nation has committed these crimes that their sins are stacked to heaven that deserves to be destroyed? I mean, we see we see sins here in America, yeah. That that are, that are bad, yeah. We, so, we so see, you're saying we see it. We sins in America. So, is America Babylon? We see it also in Europe too, in in different well, countries as well. Well, we could definitely. So, I mean, we could definitely see that. You know, what I'm saying there's an expansion of this, but what I'm saying is, who has committed more crimes? You understand than America? Uh, what about the Moors when they killed all those Christians? That's why they wear the red hats. Okay, now the Moors right now, you know what I'm saying? Like, here's the problem. The Moors are not sitting on the UN. The Moors' face are not carved into Mount Rushmore. The Moors aren't the ones who put the native Indians on the reservations. The Moors aren't the ones who unalived 70 million North American Indians. The Moors aren't responsible for popping a hole in the ozone layer. They're not, res listen, British Petroleum is the one polluting the oil. So now, instead of you running along to a society who committed small crimes, because if we take the Moors and we take America, right? Because it says Babylon's sins have stacked so high, they've reached heaven. So mm -hmm. I'm asking you, what nation has committed so many sins that if we stack them like bricks, one on top of the other would be able to reach the throne? I mean, you could say, 
America, but I'm not going to say that 100% because I could be wrong, you know? So, uh, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to be patient until I see it. Uh, so, so who else could it be that could fulfill that prophecy? I mean, I understand that there's people overseas as well who have, I mean, we can we can go and talk about the Federal Reserve, you know, people who own that private banking. You, you can talk, jail, you talk about. I, I don't know if you want to go into that. You you could you know talk about. Listen, you could talk about the Federal Reserve, but when I go look at the Federal Reserve, it's J.P. Morgan on it, it's okay. Rockefeller on it. These are all American names. So even you, by proxy, including them in this evil, there those are still American companies. So now back to what I'm saying. So what nation then could you put in? I thought those men were underneath Rothschild. Even if they were underneath, it's a conglomerate. And the, okay. the, the Federal Reserve is not running Britain. It's running America. Mm, okay. Okay. Is, well, is, I mean, is, yeah, brother. I mean, is, it's, is the Federal Reserve over Britain's money or America's money? America. So why then would you then try to connect it to a foreign area if we're talking about this area here? Well, because if there's a king who's oppressing a city in a different nation the king's the one at fault correct i don't listen i don't have a problem with that and i don't even have okay. a problem i don't have a problem with you including england in the babylonian system okay. i don't have a problem with you including all of europe in the babylonian system but then you know what you're doing brother what's that L let me ask you something what race is the rothschilds what what race is uh jp morgan what what race is all the people that signed the Federal Reserve Act? Uh, they they could have been uh, what well, could it all have been white? I I don't oh, know. Oh, because, yeah. So no, yeah, no, they, no, they no. Could have been. no. They they are all white. And now when okay. I start talking about crimes, you start bringing up the Federal Reserve Act. So you just once again added fuel to my fire to show <laughs> that they are the ones committing evil that's in the earth. So if mm. all of these people are a part of that Babylonian system, then here's what I'm going to do, right? I I'm going to read a scripture talking about prophecy, and, and I'm going to read a scripture that talks about what the Lord is going to do, right? So now, this is Revelations, once again, 18 and 2. And it says, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have, have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait for you to come back. Okay. I don't like to come, but Give me one second, brother. Hold on, my my, my daughter's talking. I understand. No, I understand. Okay. I, then go ahead. I know. I know. Huh? Like, like at school, every year at school, we celebrate Halloween party. Okay. Well, uh, no, just, not... just let me just let me just let me go. To Mariah, school, okay? go. I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm going. I'm, I'm on the call. I'll okay, talk to okay. you afterwards. Mariah. Okay. Okay. Go, okay, go upstairs. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Just take me to school okay. at. Just take me to school. We'll, 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 we'll talk about it. Okay. Can we take me to school? We'll talk at about it. Okay. Party? We'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. No sweat. I understand, man. I got kids too. So now, so here's what happens, right? So it says, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth, not the land of the earth, have committed fornication with her. Number one, every single nation is guilty of this fornication with Babylon. Number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies, in which case they're all complicit. If I steal money and you spend it and we, I go down for the crime, right? You go down for the crime with me. You know why? You were a benefactor. All of them are benefactors. But now I'm going to drop down to verse six and it's, uh, no, verse five. For her sins have reached on to heaven and God hath remembered her iniquities. Well, brother, if God has remembered their crimes, I'm going to remember their crimes. And it says, reward her even as she has rewarded you and double onto her double according to the works in the cup which she has filled, reward her double. So now we both agree Babylon's going to get destroyed, do we not? Yeah, we agree. Yeah. And we mm -hmm. agree that there's going to be a judgment that comes on to these nations that are complicit with her, do we not? 
Mm -hmm. so, then, so now, would you say then, since you brought up the Federal Reserve, that these men are committing evil in the acts and would be a part of that Babylonian system? Yeah, I mean, if yeah, there, there, there's oppression, there's there's things going on. Yeah, people. So whatever a man sows, that and that alone is what he will reap. Uh, I, I, so I agree with that. But my thing is, hold on, hold on. Just, okay, go ahead, go ahead. I just want to just want to walk this a little further, and then okay. I'll the floor okay. back. Okay, go ahead. So then, does that mean that the Lord is forgiving them, or is the Lord casting judgment on them, and they'll be destroyed? Judgment, rightfully so. The Lord so, is doing it. So I didn't say I was doing it. Should I not applaud what the Lord is going to do? Yeah, it's, it's if, rightfully if, so. Yeah. If, if yeah. I believe in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Should I not? preach and prophesy and speak his word as it is written mm -hmm. should i not ring the alarm that if you join them you're going to be destroyed mm -hmm. and now was not the forefront of all the people you brought up just so happening to be white inside the federal reserve okay are not so, they the, hold on are not they the enemies of god just because they're white doesn't mean that all white people. But I'm just I'm just asking you if this collection of people <laughs> yeah, are, the yeah. enemy, are they the enemies of God or not? Do you think that some of them can repent? I'm I'm we're not talking about repentance yet. I'm just asking okay. you if you believe they're the enemies of God currently. The people who are doing wicked acts are the enemies of God. And if they don't quote unquote for uh for argument's sake repent, what's gonna happen to them? They should be sent to the lake of fire. So why are you mad at me for saying it? No, so so the way the way that you're saying it is just the white man as far as, but the way that I say it is that anybody who doesn't repent, right? Because when I see here Romans 12, verse 17, and I know you were saying about how in Matthew 18, Jesus says, unless you forgive your brother. But in Matthew 6, 15, it says, um, unless you forgive men. So this is this is people in general. And then uh, Romans 12, 17 says, repay no one evil for evil, have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, Give him a drink for in so doing, you will heat coals of fire on his head. And I think this can also be found in, in Sirach as well, what Paul is quoting here. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink for in so doing, you will, re you will heat coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with what? Good. So that's how we show that we are truly the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ by operating in love. Let me ask you a question, brother, like um, when it comes to operating in the Holy Spirit, because you believe in the New Testament and the Holy Spirit was given to believers who are in the New Testament. Right. OK, so the fruits of the Holy Spirit is what love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness and, and self-control. Correct. OK, so you can tell that somebody has the Holy Spirit when they actually have those fruits. Right. OK. OK, so. People who walk in the flesh, they operate. The Apostle Paul says in Galatians chapter 5. Uh, let's, let's go there real quick. Galatians 5. Mm -hmm. He says, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery. Um, do y'all believe in polygyny? Absolutely. Okay. If we can have a quick conversation on that, that would, I'll be good late, before, later after, after I... I don't, I don't mind, you know what I'm saying, going okay. there. But before we do, I, I want to stay in the realm of where we're at. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, yeah. Brought up a lot of topics, all right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he says the works of the flesh are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, mm -hmm. sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness revelries and the like so things like it of which i tell you beforehand just as i also told you in time past that those who practice or do such things will not inherit the kingdom of god so people can confess yeah i believe in the lord jesus christ but if you're not keeping his commandments if you don't have the holy spirit right you're not going to enter into the kingdom of god you got to be faithful to that covenant every covenant has commandments since we in the new covenant, 
Jesus Christ gave us his commandments. And so I don't know if, if y'all believe in teaching all the commandments of Jesus that he you know, gave us, but that's what I do. I believe in teaching all of his commandments and walking in them. I, I think, right, that you believe that you in that you have found the truth. You understand? However, you you don't understand what Christ is saying because you don't understand the audience. Even like when you bring up things like all men or men or whatever the case may be, there's an audience that this is being written to. You know what I'm saying? Like like when you when you read the United States Constitution, it said all men were created equal. W was that talking about you? No, they weren't talking about black people. So, so in 1776, mm -hmm. for us to be able to understand the context of that document, wouldn't we have to look at the time frame it was written in? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't we have to look at the audience that it was written to? Yeah. That's the same thing when you read the scriptures. Just like, for example, let me ask you something. The epistle to James, is, is that for all people or is, is that for a specific group of people? To the 12 tribes scattered abroad. So, so then if it's if that's a letter, right, because mm -hmm. a pistol is a letter, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so now your name is is Michael Ray, right? Yeah. So so can I go to your house and open your mailbox and, and pull out a letter and say, wow, this is this is a wonderful letter. You get a check from your job. Like, can I go cash that check? No, you can't. No, because who's the, who's the check assigned to? My name. So how could anyone else open up a letter that isn't addressed to them? Because if I go to your house and open up that letter, you know, that's mail fraud. It's exactly. So what um, I'm trying to tell you is that the whole Bible is a letter that's written to Israel and you're trying to commit mail fraud by giving it to someone else. Now, now here's two points that, that I want to okay. bring up. Right. Okay. One okay. is that I do believe that vengeance is the Lord's. Right. However, the Lord decides how he takes vengeance. Let me give you an example of how the Lord can take vengeance. This is Ezekiel 25 and 12. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Edom hath dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and hath greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will also stretch mine hand upon Edom and will cut off a, uh, man and beast from it and I will make it desolate from Teman and they of the Dan shall fall by the sword and I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel and they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury and they shall know vengeance and the Lord God. Let me ask you something. Is the Lord using Israel and people to take upon his vengeance upon a nation? Yeah, he's done that in, in the old. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. Beautiful. He's, he's done that before. Now, let me show you something in the New Testament. Okay. In Revelations, the second chapter. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, if I was to read verse 25, it says, but that which she had that which she have already hold fast till I come. What do we have? We have the truth. We have this doctrine and he that overcometh, meaning what? All the adversity, everything trying to rip this truth away from you and keepeth my works mm -hmm. unto the end to him. I will give power over the nations. What nations? These nations we read that are supposed to be destroyed that are against God and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as mm -hmm. the vessel of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as i am received of my father so now what i need to explain to you is that christ and his hundred and forty four thousand are men that's going to rule this planet are men that's going to rule this 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 these nations with a rod of iron so i don't know why you try to remove those who serve Christ from the equation and from the judgment that's supposed to come onto these nations that have oppressed our people who are the Israelites. Yeah, no, I'm not saying that we won't reign with Christ. I'm just saying that, brother, the way that you guys are presenting Jesus is as if white people can't be saved. But I, I just can't see that because I, I, so do you believe that white people are white people are Gentiles? Um, white people are a part of Gentiles, but there is a context to Gentiles. You know what I'm saying? Just okay. like, so, so for example, right? One word could have multiple meanings, but it can't mean the same thing at the same time. So for example, you a brother, right? Mm -hmm. So if I said, yo, that's my dog. What am mm -hmm. I talking about? That's my bro. You know? I'm not, I'm not talking about a canine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, if, but if I say, if, if I say, did you feed the dog? What am I talking about? A canine. 
an animal. Exactly. So, so that one word has context. Now, when I say dog, right, in a in a specific context, can I be mm -hmm. talking about an animal and a person at the same time? No. 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 Mm -hmm. So Gentile has context. Mm -hmm. And while Gentile could mean another nation, it could mean an Israelite. And there's something that belongs to another nation of Gentiles. And there's something that belongs to Israelites who are called Gentiles, who are a part of the adoption to whom need to come back to the covenant. So okay. I can't just say, yes, th this nation is Gentiles because there's a context to Gentiles. Okay. Quick question. Um, so you, you believe the gospel is in Luke chapter four, right? In Luke chapter four, verse 18 it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel, which is the good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the, the acceptable year of the Lord. And then we see a Jew and a Gentile set free. We see the woman in Luke 13. Uh, and ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, uh, whom Satan had bound lo these 18 years be loose from this bond on a sabbath day then in mark 7 25 to 30 for a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet that the woman was a greek seraphonician by what nation because that's a it's, it's clear a greek seraphonician oh, yeah. by nation yes can, can she can here? Then, I'm, I'm gonna let you i'm sorry to interrupt you uh, but I, i'd like to stay here so but please okay. finish yeah and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter mm -hmm. but jesus said unto her let the children first be filled for it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs oh that's so beautiful and she answered and said unto him yes lord yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs and he said unto her now if it was for if it was impossible for any gentile to receive any type of deliverance or anything of the gospel right hold on hold on go ahead go ahead have some go ahead. yep yep go ahead yep you can have some um if, if it was impossible he he would have not accepted that saying but he says for this saying go thy way the devil is gone out of thy daughter and when she was come to her house she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed she received part of the gospel okay what she received was a crumb now i i have i don't have any problem with another nation receiving a crumb it didn't say she received salvation it didn't say she received the covenant she received a crumb now i don't want to leave here now now i would like for you to walk with me and and let me tell you something i i think you have integrity because any question i've asked you you didn't run you didn't mm -hmm. do a shuffle. You asked me straight up. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I'm, I'm I'm enjoying this dialogue with you right now. You know what I'm saying? Because we're, we're, we're both giving each other the time to speak. And you've actually answered all my questions directly. So I, I'd like to show you a couple of things I don't think you've ever paid attention to, to in this scripture. Okay. So Mark 7 and 26, right? This is the same woman from Matthews 15, who was mm -hmm. the woman of Canaan. She wasn't a Canaanite. She was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. And if you remember, Christ ignored her first in that chapter. But that's neither here nor there. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of his daughter. And Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled. Mm -hmm. For it is not meat. M-E-E-T is an old Quaker English word for good. It's not a good thing to take the children's bread and cast it onto the dogs. So first, let's go in reverse order. Who's the dogs, brother? Uh, we would say the Gentiles. We would say the Greeks, the Syro Phoenicians, the other nations, correct? Yes. Okay. Who's, mm -hmm. So then who then is the children? Israel. So that's that's clear. Yeah, that's clear. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not clear. I'm glad we agree. But let me ask you something. Does a dog outrank a child? No. If if you had one last meal in your house, right? And mm -hmm. and it came down. To, uh, would you then, right, take the food and give it to the dog before before your lovely daughter that you've been talking to in that house? No, I wouldn't give it to the dog. But Not, my house, but 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 Jesus' house is full. You would, you would, 
but what I'm saying is, but you would feed your daughter over the child. That's the whole portion of the metaphor. Now, now let's continue okay. on. And she said, and and she answered and said unto him, "You understand? Uh, uh, yes, Lord." Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. She acknowledged she was a dog. Did she not? Mm -hmm. And he said unto her for this saying, why did he heal her? Because of her faith. What was her faith? She had faith in the Lord. Hold on. For this saying, it says for this saying is mm -hmm. why he healed her. What did she say? Because she said, yes, Lord, e yet even the little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. So what I need you to understand mm -hmm. is that her faith was admitting she's beneath the children. Her faith was admitting she's a dog. Her faith was admitting the rank structure. And because she said, yes, bow wow, bark like a dog, woof, woof. You understand? Okay. He turned I mean around and hold on. Did he give her a piece of bread or did he give her a crumb? I mean, she got a piece of bread. Hold on. No, no, no. She said the crumbs that fall from the table. So, so I mean, so did she the get devil, a loaf of bread or did she get a crumb? The devil was gone out of her daughter. I think that's a bread right there, brother. That, that was the crumb, brother. That was the crumb. See, here's the thing, right? The, Full the deliverance. Let, let me let me tell you the loaf, right? <laughs> like 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 you you want you want to see the loaf? You want to see the loaf of bread? I mean, I mean, the demon went out of her daughter. No, no. Listen, I'm agreeing right. with you. I don't, okay. I don't have any problem with that. You understand? Let me let me let me explain. Let me explain this to you, right? Th go this, ahead, go ahead. This is this is the difference. So, if I go to Romans nine, right? Mm -hmm. And I was to read Romans 9 and 3. It says, for I wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren. There's that word brother. We're about to find mm -hmm. out who Paul's brothers are. My kinsmen, that's family too, kinfolk, yeah. according to the flesh. Your flesh is your race. Your flesh is your body. Mm -hmm. Who are Israelites? Paul's brothers, his kinsmen, and his flesh are Israelites. And to whom pertaineth the adoption? and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the services of God, and the promises. That's a lot. All of that is for Israel, and all of that is for the children. And it's not good to take the bread, the complete, and give it to them. But you know what Christ had? Christ had powers to heal. So you know what he did? He broke off a crumb and gave her a crumb of the spiritual power and took the daughter out. He did not offer her salvation. He did not say you're a child. He did not say you're adopted. All he did was give her a crumb. And I don't have a problem with them getting a crumb. Hell, they gave us EBT. That's a crumb. Christ gave her an EBT card. Christ gave a spiritual wick to feed her daughter. That's what Christ did. Hmm. You want to continue read, uh, or actually read Romans 9, 23 to 25 real quick? Oh, brother, would I ever? I was so hoping if I went here that you said that. Let's read it. You, yeah. you know what? In this instance, I don't even mind reading it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you we, said 23 to 25? Yeah, just 23 to 25 for the sake of time. I'm, I know gonna, I'm, about I'm, to... gonna, I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna open the floor to you. And before you go, I'm gonna ask you a question about what we read. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So this this is Romans nine and twenty three to to the to the callers that were holding on patiently. Thank you for your patience. I'm enjoying this conversation with his brother. Phone lines are still wide open. Y'all can also join the live stream. The link is in the chat. So I'm going to read this for you. This is Romans chapter nine verse twenty three, and that he might make known the riches of the glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory, even us whom he hath called. Not the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. As he saith also in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was beloved. Now, before I go, what is the point of, of you wanting me to read this? Okay, so um, I usually have a PDF where I could bring up to share my screen. I'm on my iPad right now, but if you have BlueLittleBible.org, you can go and look at the Thyrus Group Lexicon. I'm on, I'm, on, and, I'm on it right now. Oh, okay. Um, if you can share the screen and you could pull up Gentiles, exactly what it what it means there. Uh, foreign nations not worshiping the true God, pagans, Gentiles, 
uh, in plain contradistinction to the Jews, Romans 9, 24. So Paul is talking about foreign nations not worshiping the true God, pagans, Gentiles. Um, so if, yeah, I, I don't know if you could bring it up and share it so that way people can see it. Give me one uh, second. Okay, I okay, I cool. Don't, I don't mind doing that. When I respond, I don't want you to run. No, no, no I, I'm not, I'm not. Romans 9, 24, yep. Can you see the screen? Yeah, yeah, I can see it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Gentiles, here right we go. Yeah, yeah. And then you scroll down, uh, click show all, go, go down further. Okay. Right there, show all, yep. And then scroll down more. Mm -hmm. uh, right, right there. So what you see in plain contradistinction to the Jews, Romans 3.29, Romans 9.24. Mm -hmm. So underneath foreign nations, not worshiping the true God, pagans, Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So it gives us a clear answer on who Paul is speaking about, right? I, I absolutely agree with that, but can we go okay. a little bit further? Let's go, let's go. Awesome, so now, here's what I want you to know. It is talking about a foreign nation of people, right? Because if you if you weren't circumcised on the eighth day, if, if you didn't keep the Passover, what did Israel consider you? A uh, pagan. A pagan, a heathen. A, yeah. a heathen. They considered you another nation, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now, let me go back to the chapter, and I want everybody to follow along with this. I'm going to keep this on the screen for now, right? Yeah. So for us to be able to get the context, so do we agree, right, that the chat, the verses that we read, right, um, and I would like to include verse 26. I'm going to read 26, mm -hmm. and it says, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Are, are we in agreement, right, that Romans 9 and 24, 25 and 26 are all a collective thought? Yes, I uh are, are we in agreement then, right, that the Gentiles in 24 are the people that it's speaking of in 25 and 26? Give me one second. Let me read it real quick. Awesome. While you do that, I'm going to get this link and I'm going to drop it in the chat again if anybody else wants to join the chat. I agree. I agree. I just had to so, read it real quick. So you agree. So just because there was a pause. So what we're agreeing on is that in verses 25 and 26, these are the Gentiles that Romans 9 and 24 is speaking of. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes. so now, as he saith also in OC, are you aware that OC is Hosea? He's quoting the book of Hosea. Mm -hmm. So. I'm going to go to the book of Hosea if we want to be able to get the context to find out who he's talking about. So now let's go down to Hosea chapter one mm -hmm. and I'm going to go to verse 10. And it says, yet the number of the children of Israel, we agree we're talking about Israel, mm -hmm. shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. We agree that this is where the quote is coming from in OC, which is Hosea. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Do we I would have to double check uh -huh. later, but yeah. But yeah. No sweat. Go ahead, go ahead. Just based off what we're reading mm -hmm. right now. And now mm -hmm. with that being said, do we then also agree that no other nation is mentioned in this verse? I would have to read the chapter just to kind of get the, the context of it. But I'm going I'm, I'm to check it out, though, brother. Like, I'm going to look at Hosea 1 and, and cross-reference and everything. Let me, because uh, you're, you're, you're trying to say that when Paul is saying the Gentiles, it's talking about Israel in, in Hosea. Exactly, because otherwise, why would he quote Hosea? And in Hosea, God is saying, you are not my people but he's going to give them a chance for them to come back. And the fulfillment of that is through Christ and through Paul's Gentile mission to the scattered Israelites, which is why to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad, greetings, because Israel is scattered abroad, living like other nations, and now they need to come home. And those in Jerusalem need to accept them coming home. And those that are scattered need to come home.
So you can't add another nation to this chapter when the chapter he's quoting from doesn't bring up another nation and it only mentions Israel. And just to get more context, let's read verse 11. We read verse 10. Let's read 11. Then, too. then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, which is Christ, and they shall come up out of the land for great shall be the land of Jezreel. So when we read this quote, who are we talking about in this quote? Um, actually, brother, the reference is Hosea 2, verse 23. It, it, it's the same oh, thing. The 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 reference. Yeah. So is, you, you, you actually the hit the wrong scripture. But I'm actually not in the wrong scripture. And the, it, proof, and the hold on. And okay. the proof that I'm not in the wrong scripture is because was not Hosea 1 and 10 identical with Romans 9? Go to Hosea, uh, Hosea 2. Can I, can, I, I, can I don't show you real quick? I don't, I don't have a problem going there. Okay. I will also read that. But before yeah. we go there and you try to run, because a moment ago you said, I don't know. I have to read the context. Now what you did was you read something in a lexicon or typed it into Google, and you're about to regurgitate something you haven't even studied. But what's right no. in front of our face, what's right in front of our face is exactly what we read in Romans 9. And what we're reading right here, is it pertaining to anyone else or just Israel? So it, it looks the same, brother, but let's just check Hosea 2, 23 real quick, because I'm, I'm when gonna, I went to the I'm Amplified Classic. There. Okay, I'm, yeah. So I'm going to go there. I, can't, I, just, I just want you to answer if that's what we read or not. Yeah, I can't really give you a strong statement because I'm, I'm, I'm slow to speak. You know what I'm saying? I, I got to have. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure that because especially if I don't if I don't know something like I haven't really looked into it deep. I don't want to answer before I hear the answer because then I'll be foolish. So Hosea two and what? Hosea two twenty three. And I just want you to know that starting from fourteen, there's a header right here. If you could see that it says restoration mm -hmm. of Israel, but I'll mm -hmm. read uh, two and twenty three. Okay. Yes. So now this is Hosea two and twenty three, and I will sow her onto me in the earth. And I will have mercy upon her that hath not obtained mercy. And I will say to them, which were not my people, thou art my people. And thou shalt say, thou art my God. Okay, well, let me tell you something, brother. Yes. That's exactly what it said in Hosea 1. And it told you who this was talking about. And the blue letter itself said that all of this is talking about the restoration of Israel. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go back and I'm going to read Hosea 1 and 10 again. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, ye are sons of the living God. Now let's go back to Romans. Let's go to Romans 9. And in Romans 9 and verse 25, uh, uh, it says... As he saith also in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be, there they shall be called children of the living God. So again, is Romans 9 identical with these chapters we just read in Hosea? Yeah, yeah, it's close, brother, but let me ask you a question. Hold on, let, one last thing. Is Hosea, mm -hmm. what we've read, has Hosea mentioned any other nation concerning these quotes? No, not from what I'm seeing right now, but. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Please okay. Continue. Okay, so so why did Paul say the Gentiles and the lexicon is specifically saying in a contradistinction to the Jews? Okay, because there's context because that doesn't have the only definition of it it's not the only definition that it's not the jews that's what i'm trying to explain to you so you have to look at the context and like a moment ago when i asked you and in the very definition you asked me to pull it said pagans or a foreign nation i asked you what are Israelites, if they don't keep the covenant, you said pagans or a foreign nation. And now here we have those who are being cast off from God. What would Israel have to do? Israel, right from the beginning, has been God's chosen people, correct? Yeah, so why would he so, say that so they were not my people? He would say that because they broke his laws. He would say mm -hmm. that because for a time he's casting them off, but he's going to give them an opportunity to redeem themselves. And this is exactly why in the beginning of Romans 9, right, it said mm -hmm. 
who are Israelites to whom pertain it the adoption. So if you do some critical thinking, brother, right? Mm -hmm. Why would Israel have to be adopted if they were his people? What verse was that again, real quick? That, that is Romans nine, and that's mm -hmm. Roman, and that's Romans nine and four. When it starts pertain, when it starts explaining everything that pertains to the nation of Israel. Okay, I would have to read that first before I give an answer. I would have to, because I I, well, I don't want to say something and just be quick to respond. You know what well, I'm saying? Well, I, I, I want to be slow. Well, then I, I want to be I, I respect that. Right. And, and what I would then like to do, because this is yeah. the second time that that happened, brother, at really yeah. the third time. At first, it happened with Babylon. You weren't certain. Second, it happened with Hosea and the context. Third, it's now happening with Romans. And earlier when you called up, right, you were adamant about disagreeing with me. Now I've mm -hmm. presented an argument that you haven't seen before and you seem a little ill equipped. So rather than us keep going down this rabbit hole where you might still be a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Ill-equipped. Mm -hmm. What I would like to do is I would like for you to go back, watch this video. I hope you wrote these scriptures down and I would like for you to return with an answer to the questions that I've asked you. Okay. That sounds good. That sounds That's good. Fair. Yeah. And then hopefully we can talk about uh, some other topics that I've actually studied and, and dived into, but yeah, this, I don't, I don't specifically, I'm, um, you know, but I'm not so going to yeah. get off these because, like I said, and I, I don't want to say that you were arrogant. You know what I'm saying? You've been extremely humble. And, and, but what I mean is you did speak authoritatively when you first got here as if you knew. And now you need to go back and search for some clarity. I don't need any clarity on this. So I would like to give you that respect. And, uh, you know, what I'm saying for you to be able to do that. And then once we get past this, I don't mind having a, uh, a a conversation about something else. But hopefully you don't get jammed up then, too. <laughs> OK, well, next time, I'm Lord willing, bro, I'll be able to have my computer and I can just share my PDFs. Um, that's why I have those and be able to share them real quick. All right. But well, I, but yeah. I, hope, I hope you I hope you, you understand, experience the fruits of the spirit here. Patience and love and kindness. All right.